There is a stylus. Okay, is this recording? Hello? Is it on? Is it on? Hello? Yes, it is. Section 10.4. Let's do a quick review of what we've got so far. 10.1. Uh, we looked at sequences and we looked to see whether they converge or diverge. Then we got to section 10.2. And we looked at series. We determined if they converge. And if so, find the limit. 10.3. We, what did we do in 10.3? Oh, the integral test. So we looked at series and we decided uh, if they converge using the integral test and then we could estimate not establish but estimate the limit so today 10.4 we're going to look at a couple more tests more series and we're just going to check to see if it converges we're not going to worry about the limit um, just to see if it converges. Yes, yes or no? Converges. Yes or no. The two main tools, uh, the first one will be what I call the direct comparison test. And here's where I put in a nice uh, formal definition. Uh, we look at 10.4, and that's a direct comparison. Let's stick that in there, and here, here it is. Okay, what does this say? Let uh, the sum of A of N, the sum of C and N, and the sum of D and N, D sub N, be series with non-negative terms. That's important, non-negative terms. Suppose it's for some integer N, so that N is some uh, big number d sub n is less than a sub n, which is less than c sub n. In other words, a is stuck between d and c for any little n, once we get beyond a big M. If the sum of c converges, so the sum of the bigger one converges, then a will also converge. If a is smaller than c, and c converges, then that means the smaller one must also converge. The flip side of that is here. If D diverges, and A is bigger than D, then A also diverges. Now, the uh, the hard part... Oop, I don't want an eraser. I don't know how to go back. Well, I'll just go up here and get the pen. The hard part... To what shall I compare my compare my series? And then the answer to that is this is the question. The answer something similar. Uh, for example, uh, we have the, we have kind of three, yeah, I'm going to say three series that we can work with. We have the P series. Well, I'll start them up here. Uh, we have three good series for comparison. The first one we just did uh, in the last lecture was the P series. And this was some constant over n to some power. And then we know that if it's 
if p is greater than 1, anything greater than 1, it converges. And we know that for any p less than 1, it diverges. Now we also know that p equal to 1 uh, becomes a natural log, so then that diverges as well. So the Peer series is one that we can compare to. Another one is a geometric series. And that's simply some first term times r to the n. And we know that if r is between 1 and negative 1, we got to get that in there for Holly. If r is between negative 1 and 1, then it converges. And the third tool we have to use is the harmonic. And that's just 1 over n, or some constant over n. This could be some constant over n. And we know that this one diverges. So those are our three base ones. Uh, the best way to, to do this one is perhaps um, with an example. So let's do da, 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 um, does the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 3, sometimes I lock up here, that's that delay I was talking about, get back, get back, 3 over n minus 4 converge. Well, what does this look like? It looks like the harmonic series. It's something over n, just something over n. So our gut level feeling is that this probably diverges. So if we do a comparison, we say here's our harmonic series, and this thing is greater than, first of all, it's 3. Second of all, we're making the denominator smaller. So, if we change colors, and I don't know how to do that. It happens accidentally all the time, but now, oh, there we go. That's kind of neat. So, since this diverges, we know that the bigger one also diverges. So we're good with that. So then we can say this one diverges. Okay. Uh, how about another example? And uh, we learned through examples. Uh, you know, these these two, uh, or at least the one we've done so far, the the comparison test, direct comparison test, has a proof. But uh, I'm going to skip the proofs. So example. Back in black, like ACDC. Does the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of how about 1 over 5n minus 4? What about this one? Does that converge? Well, so let's do a comparison again. Again, we have a, a single power, just the, the power of 1 on the bottom, so it looks like a harmonic series, so it looks like it diverges. So we can do, uh, we can say, let's see, it looks harmonic. And so we'll compare it to uh, 1 over n, and we're going to hope that uh, this becomes 1 over 5n minus 4. And so once again, we know that, that this is, wait a minute, this is smaller. 
was it one over five n, one fifth over one over one, one fifth is smaller. That's not bigger. Wait a minute. So this is. I'm not sure about this. Really? So I don't know if that works. So what we need to do, and this is going to work out for us, is rearrange. And I know that uh, 1 over 5n minus 4 is the same as, I can factor out a 1 fifth. So that is 1 over uh, n minus, let's see, take a 4 of this, that's 4 fifths. And I'm just going to work with this one here. All right, so let's say, um, com recompare, so I'll try the, try comparison again, and then this is 1 over n is less than um, 1 over n minus 4 fifths. Now this time that looks pretty good. So I'm going to look at this and say, now I put a green, since you guys are printing these out in color, which I think is pretty cool, uh, and I can gratuitously use multicolor, I can say this is for sure. Why? Because I'm making this the same on top and bottom, but I'm making the denominator smaller, which means I'm making this whole thing bigger, and so this works out. <clears throat> but does that help me? You know, I'm, I'm not looking at the same series. Yes, it does, because if the sum of from uh, 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus 4 fifths diverges, 1 fifth times the limit, or times the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus 4 fifths also does. All right, so if this diverges, it, it, it goes off to infinity. Well, 1 fifth times infinity, yeah, that's still infinity. So that was good. That one worked out well for us. Let's do some, uh, another comparison here. Um, another example. Does the sum, same deal. I'm getting kind of boring here. They're all that go from 1 to infinity of uh, 3 over 4 and squared plus 5 converge. Now what does this look like? This looks like this uh, P series that we've done before, except we've got a 5 on the bottom and we've got a 3 on top. Um, but uh, maybe we can, so it looks like, it doesn't really look like, look, looks like a P-series. And uh, the P-series is 1 over n to some power. In this case, our power is probably going to be 2. And so we can make a comparison. Let's, or first we'll factor out. A three fourths first, and then we'll make the comparison. We can say that one over n squared plus this time it's well, five fourths, and I don't. There's four fifths over there down here, and now five fourths over here. I didn't mean to do that. And that is less than 1 over n squared. Okay, so that this is so I'm making the denominator bigger. So that means this is less than this one. So if um, I'll do some color in here, use green for good. So if this converges.
right? Because this is my P, P is greater than 2. This also does. This also does. Good. All right. Well, but again, I've got this 3 fourths out here. So again, I can say in black, if uh, the sum of 1 over n squared plus 5 fourths converges you know, to some finite number, finite number, then certainly 3 fourths times the sum of 1 over n squared plus 5 fourths uh, also does. And what will it be? Well, it'll be just 3 fourths of whatever my you know, original one was. All right, that works out. Um, those were pretty easy to pick. So let's look at another one. Uh, it's right here. And I think we've actually done this one before, but now we can do it a little more formally. Uh, another example. Does uh, the sum from n equals infinity uh, 1 over n factorial converge? Well, this doesn't look like anything. It certainly doesn't look like anything we've used. Or anything we know. So, well, what do we do when we're stuck? We write out some terms. Um, the top one equals, uh, let's see, 1 would be uh, 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial plus 1 over 5 factorial plus dot 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 dot. Okay. Now we could compare this to. I know we go one, one half, one six, one twenty four. That looks kind of like um, one over two to the. I'm going to have to say n minus one, which equals one over two to the zero, plus one over two to the first, plus one fourth, plus one. What does that become? 8? No, 16? Yeah, 8. Uh, plus 1 over, uh, now it's 16, plus dot, dot, dot. So what is this one here? This is geometric, right? And the common ratio is 1 half. So we know that this one converges. And I can say that, you know, term by term by term, 1 over n factorial is going to be less than 1 over... 2 to the n minus 1. So, one over n factorial converges. All right, that's good. So let's keep cranking here. Uh, do another example. I think you guys are starting to get the hang of this. How about uh, does the sum of um, 1 over, uh, what am I doing here, erase that, this is where um, if I were in a worse mood I'd have to edit out some expletives, but I'm just going to keep rolling. Um, we know that we go from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared minus 5. All right, so this looks like, uh, you know, looks like 1 over n squared, right, which is a p-series, which we know converges. So let's do our comparison. We've got uh, 1 over uh, n squared minus 5, and we know that that is uh, going to be less than 1 over n squared. So here we're making the denominator smaller, so that makes that uh, 
Wait, 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 wait. Now, hold on, what happened here? What, what, what's going on? On this previous one I did, I thought it worked out pretty well. So here we uh, made the denominator smaller, but that made this whole thing bigger. Oh, but that worked out well to show it diverges. And here, making the denominator bigger made this whole thing smaller, which is good for showing it converges. But wait a minute, what am I trying to do here? Besides making extra marks. I'm trying to show it converges, because my gut level feeling is that you know this part converges, but I'm making the denominator smaller, which makes this bigger. So this doesn't this doesn't work out. So this is uh, this is flat out. No. That doesn't work. But you know, it really seems like at a at very large n that five shouldn't matter. So at uh, very large n, the negative 5 is trivial. I don't know if that's a good math word, but whatever, trivial. But, and, and, and so, I, man, my gut level feeling still says this should work. But this comparison doesn't work. And I could try maybe n cubed, but no, that's not going to work either because that's even smaller, so that's bigger. Man, this is this is not panning out here. Um, all right, so we'll have to try a new tool. And here is a good chance to introduce a new tool. And this is going to be called the delimit comparison test. Let me slide that there. So here we go, the limit comparison test. So instead of just comparing the terms in the sequence, we compare the limits of one of our sequence to something else. So suppose that a sub n is positive, right? And b sub n is positive for all n, especially n's that are bigger than some original n. So at some point, we become positive sequences. So just a sub n is a sequence. Uh, so if the ratio of the limits the limit a sub n over b sub n equals some constant. As we approach affinity, a sub n over b sub n equals some constant, which really means that these limits are the same, but just, you know, one is you know, a scaled of the other one. Then e, then a sub n and b sub n, the sums a sub n, the sums b sub n, both converge or they both diverge. So if, it be, if the ratio of limits equals some constant, then, and say I know b sub n, if b sub n diverges, so does a sub n. If b sub n diverges, then so does a sub n. All right. If the limit as n goes to infinity goes to zero, well, what does that mean? That means that b is growing faster than a. If b grows faster than a, and b sub n converges, then a sub n converges. But now I kind of intentionally misspoke there because neither of them can grow. If they grow, we know it diverges. So if b sub n grows, well, if a sub n kind of diminishes faster than b sub n, so a sub n gets smaller faster than b sub n, that means that it goes to zero. Then if b sub n converges, the one that gets smaller faster certainly will converge. The flip side of that same thing is this. Uh, if they go to infinity, that means a sub n grows faster and b sub n diverges, then a sub n diverges. But we know neither of them grow. So if, a sub, if b sub n grows faster than a sub n, or diminishes faster than a sub n, which means that this limit goes to infinity, the ratio of limits goes to infinity. If b sub n, if our known one diverges, then our unknown one certainly diverges. Now, if you need to... I would recommend you pause and run through this and think about that, see if you can convince yourself that this makes sense. Uh, because if it doesn't, uh, the rest will seem like magic, and we don't like magic tricks. All right, well, whether you paused or not, uh, we're going to move on to do some examples of this one. So let's go back to our old friend. It wasn't that old friend, it's only about five minutes ago. Um, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 
1 over n squared minus 5. I think that's what we just did. The problem is it looks like 1 over n squared, but we're making the denominator a little bit smaller, which makes this a little bit bigger. So 1 over n squared was not a good direct comparison. So let's look at the limits. I still say that this really looks like 1 over n squared. So I'll use that. So I'm going to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the one that I am interested in, which is n squared minus 5, over the one that I know, which is 1 over n squared. And that equals the limit of uh, 1 over n squared uh, minus 5 times n squared over 1, uh, which equals the limit of, what does that become, n squared over n squared minus 5. And we could factor out that n squared, so it becomes n squared over n squared times 1 minus 5 over n squared. So now this looks like our, uh, you know, we, we've done the similar ones, the, the n squareds cancel out. So let's cancel those guys out of here. Those cancel, and we're left with just this limit. Um, 1 over 1 minus 5 squared. So we know that this goes to 0, so our limit just becomes 1. All right, let's go back and check our limit test. Um, in our limit comparison test, it went to 1, which is some constant. So that means A and B either both converge or both diverge. We know that if they'll go together, if this one does the same thing as this one. All right, let's try to remember that. So we know that this one converges. That's a P series. So if the, it goes to a constant, we know this one converges, so therefore this one must also converge. All right, good. Now, alternatively, if you don't like algebra as much and you want to bust out some calculus, uh, we could use L'Hopital. L'Hopital. And we could say that this limit of n squared over n squared minus 5 uh, will equal the limit of 2n over 2n, which still equals 1. So they both work. If you like algebra more, personally, I believe this more. This is easier for me to believe. I believe L'Hopital, but if someone came up to me late at night uh, after a Badger game and said, hey, can you prove L'Hopital? I wouldn't be able to do that. This I could prove. This I'm not as solid on, but they both work. The key thing is they both work. Uh, why, okay, so um, let's look at another example here. So uh, does... Uh, the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over uh, n times square root of uh, n plus 1. Does this converge? All right. Does that converge? Well, we certainly can say this compares to uh, 1 over n, right? Because here we've got a 1 over n right here. So that seems like it might be a good comparison. So let's try that. Um, compare to 1 over n. All right, so here we've got our uh, 1 over n. And we know this is going to be a little bit bigger. And um, so, so the denominator gets bigger, so the whole thing gets smaller. So this becomes 1 over n root n plus 1, and uh, since this one, we know this diverges, and this one is smaller than that. Ah, oh, shoot. So that's, um, that's too bad. That's, that becomes inconclusive. So this is inconclusive. 
so that didn't work. You know, great, this diverges, but what I've got is smaller. And so small and diverge, well, that could still converge. Well, we don't know. So maybe we should try rearranging this thing. So let's rearrange. And uh, so we could say this thing equals 1 over the square root of n squared times the square root of n plus 1, which then equals 1 over combine those square roots, that becomes the square root of n cubed plus n squared. All right, well, that's, uh, now we've got a 1 over n cubed, right? We know that converges, so let's try that one. 1 over uh, n cubed is a converging thing for sure. We're going to take the square root, which makes the denominator a little smaller, Right, which makes uh, this whole thing bigger. So this goes over here, uh, 1 over root n cubed plus n squared. And we know that this one converges. Oh, crap, but this one's bigger. Yeah, so that didn't work either. Man, I'm striking out, but I'm in such a good mood that uh, this is also inconclusive. Well, let's keep trying. So we couldn't compare to that, we couldn't compare to that. Uh, well, I guess when, uh, when all else fails, what we can do is go to our old friend. Again, it's not that old of a friend, it's only been around for a few minutes. Um, The limit comparison test. Put exclamation points. Maybe this is going to work. Man, I'm in a good mood. I'm so optimistic. But a good mathematician isn't optimistic. A good, good mathematician is skeptical, right? Well, okay, so what, what I'm working on, I've got this. I'll write the same thing over again. It's 1 over n times root n plus 1. Now, I know that this is an n and this is an n to the 1 half. So that smells like 1 over n to the 3 halves. All right, so that, that's kind of what it looks like. Now this is a p-test, right? This is a, a p-series that converges. So I know this. It's similar to this. So to do this um, limit comparison, what do I do? I go, uh, I take my known one, 1 over n root n plus 1 over uh, 1 over uh, n to the 3 halves. And I know that from before, this is 1 over root, make sure that's a root, um, n cubed plus n squared, and I know that this is the same as 1 over the square root of n cubed. So I'm going to flip that guy and multiply. That becomes the square root of n cubed over the square root of n cubed plus n squared, and that equals, well, I could just make it all the one square root, right? Um, n cubed over n cubed plus n squared. Now this is kind of boiling down to maybe something useful. Um, I can factor out an n cubed out of the top and bottom. So this becomes the square root of uh, n cubed times 1 over n cubed times uh, 1 plus 1 over n. So this, let's see, we can cancel some stuff out here now. 
So I cancel that out, I cancel this out. So that's the square root of one over one plus one over n. Now I'm, I remember, I kind of, I didn't want to write my limit a million times here. So I'm really looking for the limit as n approaches infinity of the square root of one over one plus one over n. Now I have that function rule that says that this is the same as the square root of the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over 1 plus 1 over n, which equals the square root of, this thing just goes to 1, right, because that goes to 0, 1 over 1 is 1, the square the limit then is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. Sweet! So I know that they both do the same thing. So if I said this converges, that's a p-test, converges, that means this also converges. All right, so that worked out pretty well. It took me a few tries. I blew it the first couple times, but yeah, eventually we got it. Keep, keep grinding on these things and they'll work out. All right, so enough of this little children's play here. This isn't a children's class. This is real math. So let's do an example that has some... You know, maybe some transcendental functions, such as the limit of, uh, let's see, n equals 1 to infinity again. Let's throw a natural log in there. Let's say the natural log of n over n cubed. All right, does this converge? Now this one, well, let's see here. There's um, n cubed. So I know 1 over n cubed, that's a no-brainer, that converges. Natural log of n, I think this grows quite a bit slower. I mean, this grows really fast, and that grows fairly slow. So my gut level feeling is that this thing converges. So let's do, um, let's do a limit comparison. Because um, that worked pretty well the last time. And uh, let's try, uh, let's compare it with 1 over n cubed. Because right, that's what it looks like. So I'm going to take the uh, limit as n approaches infinity of ln. Well, that doesn't work so well. Cursive, not so good. ln over n cubed over 1 over n cubed. Right, so I know this converges, so I'm hoping this can determine that converges. So that equals um, the... Uh, limit of, um, well, no, the, flip that guy, multiply again, this, so we're going to wind up with a natural log on top. Uh-oh. So we'll just wind up with a natural log. And this goes off to infinity, right? That goes to infinity. All right, well, but I remember that showed up in that limit comparison test. So if we go to infinity, uh, where am I here? Hello, where are you? Down there. So the limit comparison test, let's go back and find that thing. Okay, it goes to infinity, then if the bottom one diverges, the top one diverges. If it goes to infinity, if the bottom one diverges, the top one diverges. All right, let's go back here. Bottom one diverges, top diverges. If the bottom one diverges, ah, the bottom one converges. So that doesn't do me any good. Again, no expletives necessary because, uh, well, for whatever reason, it's been a long day, I'm still in a good mood. So this one was inconclusive. Inconclusive. So, well, one over n cubed, this this really converges fast. So maybe I was getting a little too greedy. I'm gonna try one that doesn't converge quite as slowly. Or doesn't converge so so strongly. Doesn't converge strongly. Well, let's try uh, limit as n goes to infinity of <clears throat> let's see, I'm going to print natural log of n over n cubed. I'm going to put that over, I'm going to not be so greedy, how about a 1 over n squared? Because right, that doesn't converge quite as fast. So this becomes, flip that guy and multiply, you get um, an n squared on top and cubed in the bottom, so this becomes natural log of n over n. Oh, now that one 
we've done that one before. Uh, that showed up in that, that was in our toolbox, I think even on the section 10.1. And we know that this one here, this goes to zero. So if it goes to zero, what does that mean? That, uh, well, we better go back and look, because I forgot. I don't remember this. I don't like remembering stuff. So if it goes to zero, and the bottom converges, then the top definitely converges. So if it goes to zero and the bottom converges, the top definitely converges. Let's check that out and see how we did. So we know that this converges. Ooh, I'm going to do this in green because I'm feeling good. So this guy down here, this converges. And then this implies that the top converges as well. All right, so, but we kind of knew that up here. We were, we were guessing up at the top here that natural log of n grows considerably slower than n cubed, so I guess that converged. So let's, uh, let's push our luck a little bit here. And just let's keep messing with this one, see what happens. I guess we're not pushing your luck. I'm the one, I'm risking public humiliation. <clears throat> so, uh, how about, um, uh, does blah, 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 uh, the sum n equals 1 to infinity. What if we say the natural log of uh, n, but we square this whole thing, make that grow a little faster, and we'll still compare that with n cubed. All right, well, I decided I got a little too greedy the last time. Uh, or does this converge? Finish the question. Does that converge? So let's try to compare this with 1 over n squared again. So I'm going to say let's use the limit as uh, n goes to infinity of uh, ln of n. The quantity squared, whoa, that does not look good. Looks like the same thing written a few times. So the uh, ln of n we're going to square that whole thing over n cubed and we're going to compare this with uh, 1 over n squared because I know that converges. Alright, we flip this thing upside down and that becomes the limit of, uh, let's see, n squared on top so then we wind up with an n on the bottom so that gives us uh, natural log of n. This thing is still squared. Uh, and then we're left with just an n on the bottom. So how did that do? Well, this was not in my toolbox. I knew natural log of n over n was in there, but natural log of n squared, that's not in there. So what do we do? Well, here's one we haven't used in a while. Let's try our old friend. I don't know why I'm so into old friends today. L'Hopital. Let's try it. So this equals, um, well, that doesn't equal, but that implies that we're going to try the, how does this work? Well, this is kind of like a function inside of a function inside of a function. All right, well, let's try it. Um, 2 times the natural log of n times the derivative of the natural log of n, which is really 1 over n over um, derivative of n is just 1 so that equals um, 2 natural log of n over n which equals, ooh look at this, 2 times 0 which equals 0 which means that if this thing converges that this definitely does, so sweet that converges, the top converges. Well, huh. What would happen if we said um, does the sum from n equals 1 to infinity so we decided, alright, let's try uh, the natural log of n what do you think? to the seventh let's make that bigger than the bottom one twice as big over n cubed. So what happens here? Uh, well, I think 
I think we've been at this long enough. I think we get the point of how these two tests work. So uh, we'll figure that out later. All right. Thanks for listening. Uh, I think I made it through edit free. So I'm going to put it up. If there are any expletives that I missed, please email me. And then I'll edit them out. All right. Uh, if it's uh, nighttime, if you're probably watching this at night, have a good night. Stop.